Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. I had a question from a viewer that is having problems with this. His skid loader compatible quick attach on his front end loader. This comes from Kenneth. And Kenneth says, do you have a video showing how to hook up with a skid steer type attachment? I just got a new tractor with that on it and I'm having a heck of a time changing attachments. I used to have a John Deere and they've got a different system and it was simple to hook the arms into the top loops curl it back and hook the pins on now I find myself moving back and forth up and down all around trying to hook the lip of the attachment and lift it up and set the pins I find myself not wanting to use the tractor if it means changing the loader attachment that's on it can you offer any advice Kenneth I feel for you uh, you had the deer system you liked it and, and now you've got this new system and you don't like it. And, and uh, let's, let's talk a little bit before we go forward about quick attach. The earliest loaders had no quick attach. Quick attach has been developed in my lifetime. And, and um, the first one I had was a do-all system. And, and back in the early days of front end loaders and quick attaches, everybody had a different system. Uh, do-all, uh, Schwartz, um, the, the skid loader folks had one, Bush Hog had one, uh, th there were just multiple brands, Westendorf, I, actually, I think Westendorf may have came out with a quick attach before anybody, but, but you had all these different, and I'm probably forgetting some, but you had all these different systems and they weren't compatible with one another. So if you had a set of pallet forks and you traded tractors and got a different loader, they might not fit. So there was a gradual paring down and the market kind of demanded that we have a system like this on our tractors and and the reason right now there's there's three different systems that are not compatible there's the John Deere system that Kenneth mentioned and it's basically a, a face plate kind of similar to this and it's called a hook and pin system there's a hook that goes up and, and you and you get underneath it lift it up and, and tilt it back and there's two pins that come in and then you put linch pins and holes in those pins and that secures the whole thing on the front of the tractor that's the deer system the system we don't see too often in this country and maybe in other countries and if you're in another country let me know if you've got this is the euro system and the euro system kind of works similar to this but when you lift up the bucket and tilt it back it automatically locks in place so you have one less trip off the tractor that's the advantage and then you have this system, the skid loader compatible or the Bobcat system, the universal system. And this system, I think, was originally developed on a Bobcat skid loader. And the reason it's on most of the tractors today sold under 50 horsepower with the exception of deer is because there's so many attachments available for it. If you found a, a, somebody that was getting rid of their skid loader and wanted to sell you their pallet forks, they'll go right on here. And, and so there is a, a whole lot of interchangeability with this system. But there's a lot more going on here than with the deer system. With the deer system, there's no moving parts. I, I actually, I hate to say this because I fought deer my entire career. They, they've got a pretty decent system there. There's not a lot. Of, there's there's no moving parts to it, so it's simple, but it's not compatible with this. Why do the tractors have this and not the deer system? That's simpler. Well. They have it because all the skid loaders have it. And on a skid loader, it works great. You've got to curl into your bucket and get the face plate underneath the bucket, then pick it up, tilt it back, and then put these levers down. And on a skid loader, you're sitting right here. So that's not a problem. You can see what you're doing. You can get right into your bucket or your pallet forks. And then you can just uh, unbuckle your seat belt, get up out of the seat, and push these levers down, and you're ready to go. The problem is, on a tractor, you're sitting way back there. You can't see what's going on up here. And, that, and that's why Ken is having problems. He can't see what's going on. So the tips today I'm going to give you to help you get comfortable with this system. And it, it takes a lot of practice. It took me a while. I, I was pushing my bucket around and, and frustrated with it, just like you were, Kenneth, not that many years ago. So the question today is, if I've been using the deer system and I like its simplicity, and now I've got a tractor with a skid loader compatible, how do I learn to use that? Or how do I learn to use the skid loader compatible quick attach if I've never used a loader before? And so I'm going to give you six tips on how to make this work for you. And then at the end, I've got some just random tips about front end attachments that I think will help you. So if you've got the deer attachment and you're comfortable with it, stay with me and we'll talk about that. Let's get started. Tip number one, put your loader bucket on level ground 
and don't put it in your yard. Put it somewhere where you can push it around and dig up some grass and, and, and not worry about scuffing up your turf trying to get into it. Because the first few times it's going to be, you're going to drop it off, you're going to pick it up cockeyed, you're not going to be able to get it on. That's normal. I like to leave it in a mowed area so you're not uh, catching grass or brush in between the face plate and the loader bucket and, and, and that makes it easier. So that's number one. Number two, and this is something you don't have to worry about with the deer system, take a can of WD-40 and just soak these components down here because they get dry and they get debris in them and when, when they get a little bit of dirt or weed seed or whatever, these don't work near as well. So once you get it on, get your bucket on, it's really hard to push these down. So get your can of WD-40 and soak that face plate good where these moving components are back here, the springs and everything, and that'll make your life a lot easier. Number three tip, and this is where I start telling you about how do you actually get that bucket on and, and how, how, how's that look? Well, the first thing I want to tell you, when you're coming into your bucket, come at a slight forward angle. I've tried it this way, I've tried it kind of back, you know, of course if you come at, a, at an angle, here's your bucket. If you come back, you're going to push your bucket. But, but the tendency is to try to tilt it too far forward. You want just a slight forward rake on that face plate when you come into your bucket. And you're going to feel it hit when it, when it hits. And the first few times you do it, you're going to hit a, a bracket on the side and not be squared. And number four, try to come in dead square with the bucket and that's that's the toughest part about this process if you're off just a little bit and usually your face plate is going to be narrower by about an inch from that that bucket bracket and so when you go into it for some reason if you're all the way over to one side and you're wedged against that one side those levers won't go down well and so you you want to be dead even like with a quarter to a half inch gap on both sides. If you can see a little gap on both sides, I've found those buckets go on so much easier. I don't know why that is. So, so you want a little gap on both sides. And your tendency when you're trying to steer from the tractor and see around the hood is to overcompensate. And that's where you get frustrated. You just want a little turn of your wheels. And sometimes you can be right in that bucket, just, just touching it, and just turn the wheels a little bit and your, and your loader bucket will move. One little trick I found to getting my bucket centered is not to look at the outside of the face plate here or the bucket but at the inside these brackets are welded on and if you get centered on your inside of your face plate with this plate right here right here to here and here to here you're good it's real easy to see here it's harder to see out here if you don't have a bracket like this you might get your face plate on your bucket just exactly centered and then put a paint pencil where this edge is so you can see it from the seat of the tractor. Put a mark on both sides and that'll help you get centered. Tip number five is to come in with your face plate just a little bit below the lip that you got to go under on the bucket on the corresponding female face plate on the bucket. Uh, I've, I've you know come in way low and you don't want to do that you want it you just want to clear it that's all you want you want that top of this face plate to be just below that 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 bucket if you come in and you're and you're tilted forward just a little bit and you're not too low and, and you come in square you'll get right under that thing and, and plan to push it just a little bit and, and and if you have to if you have to push it and you're not center and you turn your wheels just a little bit and you push it and then all of a sudden it catches that'll get you on now, once you're on your bucket, let's go to tip number six. It's real important when in this system to make sure that the, the bucket is, is flush with the front of the plate. And I, I don't know why this happens on this system, but occasionally you'll, you'll, you'll be flush here and you'll look over there and there's a, just a, a, a maybe a quarter inch gap or an eighth inch gap and you're not on. You feel like you're on, but you're not. And sometimes you can put these levers down and you think your pins are engaged and you think you're good, but, but you're still not totally on. If that bucket is not properly mounted on the face plate and you lock it down and do work with it, you can tweak your face plate. And I can tell you that's an expensive problem to repair. I've seen it done many times and it's not a good situation. So what you want to do is get off your tractor, and this is tip number six, 
and, and check your angles and make sure you're flush on both sides. The bucket and the face plate are, are totally flush. And then you can put those levers down. And if you have trouble getting the levers down when you're flush, it's probably you're probably over to one side here and, and, and touching that bracket. And, and you got to start over again and get out and get her, get her centered. And then, uh, along with number six, pick the bucket up after you've got the levers down and tip it forward. And if your pins are coming out, you're likely on right. Now those are six tips for getting your skid loader compatible system to go from one attachment to another. Now I've got three little tips I'm going to give you here at the end that will make your life easier with uh, loader attachments regardless of whether they're Euro attachments or John Deere attachments or skid loader whatever and and these are just little things I've learned over the years that I, I wanted to pass on and I've kind of covered them in other videos in different videos but I want to put them all together here first one is if you're if you know you're gonna be moving attachments around and you're not going to be in the attachment you're in before you get on the tractor you can lift your levers up or take your pins out on your deer system and then you, you save one trip off the tractor. A lot of times if I, I go into the barn to get my, my tractor and I'm gonna, I know I'm going to take the loader bucket off and put pallet forks on, I'll go ahead and raise those levers up and that saves me one trip off the tractor. If you raise your levers or take your pins out on the deer system, there is absolutely nothing keeping that bucket or attachment on but gravity. So only do this if you're not going to use the attachment, you're only going a short distance across a smooth surface and then you can get out of it and get into your other attachment without getting off the tractor. Number two, if you're trying to cram your tractor into a barn or a, a garage with tight space, which I always try to do in the winter, try to get everything inside in the winter, you can make the footprint of that tractor much, much smaller by how you angle the attachment on the front of it. I have put my pallet forks on my tractor and put them in the barn and then tipped them all the way over, raised them up, and driven all the way forward to my bush hog and then dropped the okay. forks down, straight down, and I always put a block under them onto the deck of the brush hog. And, and they then they stay there. And that'll give you a lot more space to cram more stuff in. Also, if you're putting pallet forks in, you can of course drive your pallet forks under your brush hog and they'll be fine there and that, that gives you that much more space. But raising the pallet forks up, going over the brush hog, and then tilting them down will get you more space even, even than that, and it won't hurt the brush hog any. The other thing you can do, if you've got a loader bucket on, you can tilt that loader bucket all the way under, and that's gonna give you more space to drive the tractor forward. And that's also real important if you're loading a tractor on a trailer, tilting that bucket forward will let you drive that tractor further on the trailer and give you more tongue weight, which can be real important when you're driving down the open road. Finally today, the third thing I'll tell you, and, and most people figure this out, but uh, in case you're new to tractors, if you need to do work with your pallet forks in your bucket and it's far away from your house, put the bucket in the pallet fork, tilt everything back, and you might throw a strap around it, and you can carry both to the field and then use them and then bring them back. Uh, it's something that most people figure out, but something you need to know if, you, if you're using two attachments and going back and forth between one and the other. If you're one of those folks that has a tractor with a pin on front bucket, in other words, there's no quick attach to get from one attachment to the other, you can convert a pin bucket to a quick attach. And I happen to, on my website, offer kits to do that. And they involve torching the pin brackets off the back of the bucket and welding a new plate on there, and then changing your pin on plate, adding a, a quick attach adapter to it, but it can be done. It's a little bit expensive, but if you're gonna keep the tractor for a long time, it's very, very well worth it. If you'd like to see the quick attach adapters, go to my website right here. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, thank you, I'd be honored. Click the mic face icon and check the bell so you're notified when I post videos. Here's another video you might wanna watch. Thanks for watching.